find me with the promise Dancing where you prophesy Still shout The psalmist declares, it was good when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Welcome to our service today. We are so glad that we are able to gather together to worship God. You're watching at home. We are so glad that you are watching. I want to encourage you to get comfortable. Put aside all the distractions because we are going to worship God with all of our hearts, with all of our strength uh, today. And so, you know, if you want to stand, if you're seated, whatever position you're in, I want to encourage you to enter in to worship with us. God is worthy to be praised. And I want to encourage you, listen, copy and paste and send this text to a few friends, to a few family, and say, hey, our church service is on. Uh, join us in watching. And this is the beautiful thing of the internet. They could be on the other side of the world. Amen? But gather together to worship the King of Kings. So, welcome, you know, if you're at home, I want to encourage you, stand up, put on your dancing shoes, amen. We are going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and with praise. Father, we honor you and we praise you. We thank you today, God, that we have the honor and privilege of worship in your name. I pray, Father God, that your holy presence would meet with us Lord, each person, wherever they are watching this, I pray, God, that they would sense that beauty, the love, Lord God, uh, the awesomeness of your presence today. Let the Shekinah glory of God uh, fill each person. And I ask today, God, this one thing, that each person would walk away from our service with a renewed revelation of the greatness of your love for them that they would have a holy visitation with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We ask this in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen and amen. Let's get into worship today. Thank you. 
precious Lord Jesus, treasure of mine. Oh, what a privilege to be your delight.
is beautiful and it is so good to bless him. If you're just joining us for our service, welcome, welcome. My name is Marcia. I have the honor and privilege of pastor at Mississauga Victory Church. As we worship God with our singing, we are going to worship him with our giving, our tithes and our offering. Let me read for you Psalm 92 verse uh, 12 down to 15. You know, this has been my theme verse since last November, um, where God just, you know, leapt off the page for me. And I'm going to read it to you in the New Living Translation this time. It says, uh, but the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon, for they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. Somebody say amen. <laughs> they will remain vital and green. They will declare the Lord is just. 
He is my rock. There is no evil in him. Amen. The godly will flourish. If that is you, say, that's me. Amen. That is a promise from God. Amen. And so I want to encourage you to grab a hold of that verse. Stand on it. You know, ever since I, uh, those words leapt off the page for me, you know, last November, almost a year, I have seen flourish con uh, conferences. I've seen all sorts of things on the internet. Amen. Um, where it's like this word is just renewed and popped up. Or perhaps I'm just seeing it afresh because the word is so strong in my heart. But my prayer is that you would flourish, is that you would flourish, MVC. So let me pray for us. Father, I thank you that your word is truth. Despite what we see in the natural, despite how we are feeling, your word is truth. And God, I pray today, Lord God, and declare this truth over Mississauga Victory Church and all the godly who are watching this. Father God, that we shall flourish we will flourish like a palm tree. We will grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon, Father, because we are planted in the house of the Lord. I speak this blessing over your church today in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you for your faithful giving. You know, it's donate at mississaugavictory.ca if you choose to give by e-transfer which the majority of people do. So donate at mississaugavictory.ca. Uh, it's in the description of this video. If you prefer to give by PayPal, um, just go to our website and you will find a donation link there, mississaugavictory.ca. Good old-fashioned mail uh, checks works as well. So thank you so much, uh, MVC. In regards to announcements, what we um, have happening right now in the church, our life group has started. It is not too late. It is never too late uh, to join. You would have all received uh, the information that we're going through called The Way to Discipleship Program. These have been such a blessing and I am growing leaps and bounds, you know, as we share the word of God together, as we learn from each other and share what God is doing in our lives. So Tuesdays or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Tuesdays or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And let me remind you, you know, prayer is a vital part of our church. Without prayer, you know, where would we be? And so I want to encourage you to join us for our weekly prayer service, Fridays at 7.30 p.m., Fridays at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 11. So if Friday doesn't work for you, join us, you know, for pre-service prayer for around 15, 20 minutes on a Sunday morning at 11 a.m. God bless you. Let us get into the word. Perhaps like me in school, you learned about the seven wonders that there are in the world. And these are often beautiful geographical landscape, you know, things that are just so uh, amazing. There are a couple other things that amazes me that I consider wonder. And the first thing that I would say that is a wonder that my mind cannot fully grasp or comprehend, and that is the amazing love of God. This love that he has lavished on us is incomprehensible. Like words cannot even describe it. That he loves us so much that, you know, Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for you and for me. This love is so amazing that the God who created heaven and earth desires for you and I to be in a relationship uh, with him, that we would commune with him. And this beautiful wonder that God has uh, for us and his love and this relationship, you know, the, the next thing that stirs my heart is that God desires to speak to us. I want for you to think about that for a moment. The God who spoke and said, let there be. This awesome God, the all, ex you know, self-existing one, the omnipotent, all-knowing God wants to speak to you and wants to speak to me. There are, what, seven to eight billion people on the planet 
But yet, he wants to speak to us, not just collectively when we're together. He wants to speak to us individually, right where we are at. Whatever it is we're going through in our lives, God wants to speak to us. Uh, this past week in our life groups, as we're going through our workbook, one of the questions is, and it's a discipleship uh, workbook that we're going through um, to enable us to grow in a deeper, more intimate relationship uh, with God. And, you know, part of that is hearing his voice. So one of the exercises that we had to do, obviously, is, you know, in our journals as we're doing uh, our study, we all have our notebooks that we're writing down in, is to find a quiet spot and we are to ask God the question, uh, what do you see when you look at me? And the whole gist of the exercise is to um, begin to fine-tune our ability to hear God's voice. Well, one individual shared with me what God uh, spoke to them, and she was at a critical place, you know, in her Christian walk and just desiring to hear from God. And she had said to me, initially, she was afraid of what God uh, would say to her. But let me read to you what her lovingly, her lovingly, her loving Heavenly Father said to her. I got to get my words out right. He says, um, in response to her question, what do you see when you look at me? I see a heart that loves me, a heart um, that loves to give and bless others with her gifts. I see a determined woman who won't give up and let anxieties overwhelm her. I see a woman who is persevering, who has a heart after me, who loves me. I do not see failure. I see commitment to not giving up. I see my daughter who is growing and maturing even though she doesn't see it. I see my child whom I love. I am not displeased with you. I am walking with you. Never forget that you're not walking through life alone. I have put people in your path who love you and who will show you a glimpse of my love for you. I'm here. I am telling you, I read that. And even though it weren't words to me, it blessed me. The awesomeness of serving a God who would speak so personally and speak so direct to me is a wonder. And I, you know, want to talk to us about today the word that speaks. Or I should say the word who speaks. You see, in Hebrews 1 verse 1, it says, In the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, and at many times in various ways. Our God is a speaking God. But it says in verse 2, But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. I want to say to us today, that Jesus Christ, the living word, speaks to us today. In John 6, verse 66, it says, you know, uh, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. And so Jesus looked at his disciples and he says, you do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the 12. And Simon Peter, you know, he's always the one speaking up. Simon Peter answered and says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. These disciples had been with Jesus. And they've heard his teaching. And they recognize that there was something so different when Jesus spoke. You know, Jesus would go into the synagogue. And when Jesus would read from the scroll, he would read portions of the Old Testament. The scripture tells us that the people were in awe because he spoke with such authority. It was so different. And I want to say that Jesus speaks. He speaks life. You know, the disciples calls his word uh, eternal life. And the scriptures, you know, um, would say to us, amen, that the words, Jesus says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit 
and they are life. And I want to encourage us today, amen, to be listening for the word of God to speak to us. And I want to talk about Jesus being the word. Can you just say his name or type it in the chat? Just say to yourself, Jesus. John wrote the gospel, uh, the apostle John wrote the, the, the gospel of John. And he wrote it from a different perspective, from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You see, John had the task of writing to a non-Jewish audience. So where the other gospel writers began with genealogy, and they began with all of the backstory about Jesus. You know, John begins his um, record of Jesus' life in such a different way. As a matter of fact, he gives us a prologue. Uh, a prologue is that part heart that comes at the beginning of a play or story, you know, and it's giving you information that's setting you up for the rest of the story, right? So if you're watching a television show and it's a series, what they will do, they'll give you a flashback as to what happened previously so that you are caught up with the present time story they're about to tell you. That's a prologue. So this is what John does in giving us the background information about Jesus. Amen? Remember God says, before time, amen, God spoke to his prophets. Now he's speaking to us through his son. So in John 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. And without him nothing was made that has been made. Jesus is the creator. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. How did John knew what happened in the beginning even before he met Jesus? Well, it's simple. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You see, all scripture is God-breathed. Amen? And so John is, is just that, that vessel uh, that Holy Spirit is using to record, it, to record um, you know, as he prompts. And so, I, you know, John knew all of this. Let me read to you uh, one of the most declarative statements about Jesus. I want to read it to you in the Passion Translation. It says, in the very beginning, the living expression was already there. Woo! And the living expression was with God, yet fully God. They were together face to face in the very beginning. And through his creative inspiration, this living expression made all things, for nothing has existence apart from him. Let me quickly say, I don't have time to go into all of this, but in this prologue that I just read, you know, John 1, we learn about the pre-incarnate Christ, amen? We learn about Christ before he came to earth. This is his incarnation, before he came to earth in the form of a babe, amen? And so we learn in this prologue that he existed, he coexisted with God, uh, the Father. And we learn that Jesus is the Word. Word of God. This is what we're going to talk about today. This prologue also tells us that Jesus is God and that he's the creator of all things. And we also learn that Jesus is life. Amen. And so as I mentioned, I don't have time to uh, go into all of that, but you know, you could take a look at this uh, a little bit later. Amen. But I, I want to talk to us today you know, about Christ being the Word of God. Man, so in this passage of Scripture, we learn that Jesus is the Word of God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
And, you know, I preached on this before, but let me just take some time to uh, break this down for us. Uh, the word, word here in the Greek is logos, and it means to speak intelligently. Uh, it, it, it means a saying, um, a thing. It's an expression of intelligence. And so John is using this title to present Jesus to both Jews and Gentiles. You see, because both Jews and Gentiles at that time were familiar with the term word, amen? And perhaps for us here in 2021 North America, we think of words that which we say or words that are written on the page that we read, but to the Jew and to the Gentile at that time, you know, it had such a strong meaning, amen? For us today, uh, we would say, that, you know, if somebody said something really cool and we wanted to be, you know, responded really cool, we would say something like word. Word, you know, meaning truth. I agree with what you are saying. And so the Greeks themselves at this time saw the word as uh, the power that gave man um, the ability to think and reason. They saw word as the power that brought light and understanding to man's mind, enabling him to express his confused thoughts in an orderly fashion. More importantly, the word was the power by which men came into contact with God and expressed their feelings to God. When the Greeks looked at the world in nature, they saw that things were not in chaos. They saw order, and so therefore the Greeks said that the world uh, was a mind, a reason, a power that kept things in their proper place. And for the Greek, they said, this creative and sustained in mind, this supreme reason, this unlimited power was said to be the word. Do you see how awesome Holy Spirit is? He's speaking to people right where they could understand in their time and in their, you know, their way. And it's the same way that he speaks to us today. Colossians 1 verse 17 says, He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. This is what, you know, the, the Greeks didn't know the scripture verse. They didn't know that truth, but this was their belief. In Hebrews 1 verse 3, it says, The sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. And after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Amen. For the Jews, let's take a look. They saw a word as something uh, more than mere sound. A word was something that was active and existent. It was power. It possessed the power to express something or do something. So inspired by the Spirit of God, John saw that the word is the expression of an idea, a thought, an image in the mind of a person. Amen? And so the writer saw that a word describes what is in the mind of God. Thus he proclaimed that in the life of Jesus Christ, God was speaking to the world and demonstrated what he wanted to say to man. Jesus Christ is the picture, the expression, the very image of what God desires to say to man. Amen? And so God is saying, listen, I am love. And I want for you to know that you are loved. And so when you look at Jesus and the price that he paid on the cross for your sin, this is the ultimate expression of God's love for you and God's love for me. Amen? We see Jesus walking and talking with the disciples. God is saying to you and to me, I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? And so the very image within God's mind of the ideal man was demonstrated in the life of Jesus Christ. 
We see Jesus in communion with the Father. Amen. We see Jesus taking time aside to be in prayer with his heavenly Father. This is how God desires for you and I to live. We see Jesus saying, I only speak that which my Father says to speak. I only do that which my Father says to do. This is how God desires for us to be in communion Amen, with him. And so Jesus Christ was the perfect expression of all that God wishes man to be. Jesus was the word of God who came to earth to live out the written word of God. C.S. Lewis says this, The Son of God became man to enable men to become the sons of God. Let me repeat that. The Son of God became man to enable men to become the sons of men. Why am I sharing this? It's to this. The Word speaks. Jesus Christ is the Word. Amen? He is the Word of God. And that He desires to speak to you and He desires to speak to me. And I'm, you know, sharing with us that we ought to uh, be rekindling a passion and a love for the Word of God. It is my desire, amen, and, you know, that whenever you open your Bible, whenever you go to read your Bible every single day, that you go read in your Bible expecting God to speak to you. That the words of God are more than just words on a page. It is living. It is active. It is powerful. And so I want to encourage us, MVC, that when you go to the awesome word of God, amen, to uh, approach it saying, God is going to speak to me today. God will speak to me today. John 6, 63 says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. He says, the words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. I want to encourage you that when you're reading the Bible to be looking for the fullness, amen, of God's word to speak to you. I cannot tell you how many times, whatever situation that I am going through, that the word of God would speak. And I, I shared um, Psalm 92 with you before. I wish I could tell you, you know, or I could describe, or I had the words to describe for you how those words have changed my life. You know, uh, there are a few times I, I love the Word, and you know I love, love, love the Word of God. But reading Psalm 92, verses 12 to 14, I could tell you, has shifted my life so dramatically. It has changed how I see myself. It has changed how uh, I look at finance. It has changed how I begin to see how God desires for the righteous or the New Living Translation that I read earlier, uh, the godly shall flourish. And I, I don't believe that it's just in our finances. It is that we ought to flourish in our relationship. You know, it, it speaks to me that I ought to flourish in my health in my mind, uh, in every single area. I should be flourishing in peace and in joy. Amen? I should be flourishing uh, in favor. And so those words, amen, uh, have so shifted me. And all I was doing last summer, I purposed, I grabbed my notebook, and I was going to read through the Psalms slowly. Many times I felt the prompting of Holy Spirit as I read. And, and many times the words were so beautiful, I could hardly get through an entire psalm for my devotion. But that particular day, when I read Psalm 92, 12 to 14, it was as if I saw it in the scripture for the first time. I would love to hear and perhaps you can share in the chat a scripture verse 
that completely changed your life or changed the trajectory of your life, I want to encourage us that when you are reading the beautiful word of God, amen, to look for Jesus to speak to you. The words that he speaks are spirit and they are life. Approach his word with expectancy. Woo, this is the living, powerful, life-changing, transforming uh, word of God. It will guide me. It will counsel me. It, counsel me. it will strengthen me. Amen? Look at what Jesus says in John 15, verse 10. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Woo! You're looking for joy in your life? I want to tell you that you can find joy in the Word of God. Amen? Uh, a while back, and you can look for this uh, sermon. Um, I, I preached it a few months back. It's called, you know, Discovering the Word, Discovering Joy in the Word. Amen? Because the writer says, your words were the joy and rejoicing of my heart. So just look for that sermon uh, on YouTube. It is one of my favorite uh, messages that God allowed me to preach this year. And so I encourage you. Amen? To be in the Word. Ask God to rekindle uh, the passion for the Word of God in your life. And when you read, be listening for God to speak. In John 10, verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Unfortunately, many people, you know, many Christians believe that God no longer speaks to us. Um, you know, in this day and age, which I read the scripture verses earlier that God speaks to us uh, through his son. And you and I have heard the still small voice of God at some point or at different points in our Christian walk. And I want to encourage you, amen, to say you can hear God's voice um, through his word. This is the primary way in which God speaks. The living word speaks. And I want to encourage you to begin to recognize that every word in the book, oh my gosh, is pregnant with revelation about Jesus Christ. He will reveal. I believe I emailed this out to you before, but I'll send it again. When you go to the scriptures and you're reading, amen, read expecting God to speak to you. Uh, read and study to see Jesus in the scripture. And I'm just going to go through, in every book of the Bible, there is Jesus. And I'm going to read some of them for you. I won't go through all 66 uh, books. Uh, but in Genesis, you see Jesus as creator and the promised redeemer. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the high priest. In Numbers, he's the water in the desert. Amen. In Joshua, he's the commander of the army of the Lord. In Judges, he delivers us from injustice. In Ruth, he's our kingsman redeemer. In uh, 1 Samuel, he's the prophet, priest, and king. 2 Samuel, he's the king of grace and love. Uh, 1 Kings, he's a ruler greater than Solomon. In 2 Kings, the powerful prophet. Um, in Ezra, he's the priest proclaiming freedom. In Nehemiah, he's the one who uh, restores what is broken down. In Esther, he's the protector of his people. In Job, he's the mediator between God and man. In Psalm, he's our song in the morning and in the night. In Proverbs, he is our wisdom. Um, in Isaiah, he's the suffering servant. In Song of Solomon, he's the author of faithful love. Um, in Ezekiel, he's the son of man. In Daniel, he's the stranger in the fire with us. In Hosea, he's the faithful husband, even when we turn away from him. Amen. In uh, Jonah, he's the greatest missionary. In Micah, he cast our sin into the sea of forgetfulness. In Zephaniah, he's the warrior who saves. In Haggai, he restores our worship. In Zechariah, he prophesies a Messiah pierced for us. 
In Matthew, he's the Messiah who is king. In Mark, he's the Messiah who is a servant. Uh, in Luke, he's the Messiah who is a deliverer. In John, he's the Messiah who is a God in the flesh. In Acts, he's the spirit who dwells in his people. In Romans, he's the righteousness of God. In 1 Corinthians, he's the power and love of God. In 2 Corinthians, he's the down payment of what is to come. In Galatians, he is our very life. In Ephesians, he's the lover of our church. In Philippians, he's the joy of our life. In Colossians, he holds the supreme position in all things. In 1 Thessalonians, he's your comfort in the last day. In 2 Thessalonians, he's our return and king. In 1 Timothy, he's the savior of the worst sinners. I'm going to jump ahead. In Philemon, he's our mediator. In Hebrews, he's our high priest. Amen? And uh, First Peter is our hope in times of suffering. Second John, he's God in the flesh. Third John, he's the source of all truth. In Jude, he protects us from stumbling. In Revelation, he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He is coming again, and he's the one who makes all things new. Can I encourage you? Amen? To read your Bible anew. Read your Bible expecting God to speak to you. It is life, church. It is your strength. It is your source. And read your Bible expecting, looking for Jesus. Looking for Jesus. The very word of God. He will sustain you. He will keep you. If you're watching this and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can I encourage you to get to know this awesome King, this wonderful Redeemer and Deliverer, the one who loves you so much that he died on the cross so that you could be reconciled to God by having your sins forgiven. The Scripture tells us, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. And so can I encourage you today, amen, that all of us, you know, if you are not saved, that you must be saved. And you do that by confessing your sins and declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord and welcoming him into your heart today. If you would like to know more about what it means to be a Christian, if you would like to say, yes, I want to follow Christ, yes, I need to know how to, how to have my sins forgiven, would you contact us? We would love to send you some material. Send it to prayer at mississaugavictory.ca. Prayer at mississaugavictory.ca. We would love to send you some information and follow up with you. God bless you. Uh, just as I opened up with Sharon, how God spoke to this woman at our church, God can speak to you likewise. Be listening for him this week. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is truth. Your word is life. I thank you that you would stir up our hearts with a uh, fresh passion for your word. And God, as your people read your word, as they study your word, I thank you that you will speak that you would give them divine revelation of what they've read. I thank you that you would speak to their situation right where they're at. Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Strengthen your church, God, through your word. Uh, fill them with joy, God, by your word. God, direct and guide. Heal, deliver, <laughs> restore because of your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. I look forward to having you join us next week. We have a surprise guest speaker for you next week. Uh, do join us, amen, and invite a few friends to watch as well. God bless you. Until we see you again, be blessed. Walk in his love and his power and his might. Know that you're not alone. In Jesus' name, amen.
our chief cornerstone no other foundation can we build upon not philosophy nor the wisdom of man for all other ground is sinking sand upon
crown.